So, hello everybody. I hope you can all hear me well. Thanks everybody for, for coming. Um, I am happy to, to present to you today my, my talk, um, The Road to More Secure Cryptography. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the Road to Secure Cryptography and Understanding and Preventing Common Misuses. Closer? Okay. Um, uh, short um, short to, to my person, who am I? My name is Markus Schiffermüller. I'm a master's student um, at the Technical University of Graz. I am majoring in um, cybersecurity and I'm really interested and passionate about cryptography and I really like to play CTFs in my free time. Um, CTFs, for those who are not in the know, are security competitions where you are often exposed to um, invalid security or insecure um, implementations of, of cryptography in my case. And I'm really passionate about this and I've seen over the last year or so quite a lot of them and I wanted to share what I've learned um, today with all of you. So maybe be, let's begin with a, with a definition of what are misuses. So misuses are the incorrect usage of cryptographic algorithms. Um, they're Whenever we as developers are, mis are using a cryptographic library or a cryptographic algorithm, this is where misuses can happen. If we're using something, for example, like this. Um, and whenever we are misusing something, either confidentiality, integrity, or authenticity are not guaranteed. Um, if you've not been exposed to a lot of cryptography, these terms might not mean a lot to you. Um, so for, con I think confidentiality, at least for me, it was one of the first things that we kind of think about when we think in terms of cryptography. Confidentiality in our case means that if I encrypt a message, I want to be sure that nobody else can read that message. That only the person that has the correct key is able to decrypt the message. Integrity means that when I send the message to somebody else, I also want to make sure that nobody is able to alter the message without the other person knowing. And authenticity means that when I receive a message, I want to be sure that the receiver is actually the person that he says he is. And cryptographic misuses um, can compromise one or all three of those. And I think it's really um, important to kind of have a better understanding of them. So I think it's really useful because I think cryptography is the, the bedrock of a, secure implement, of a secure application. If your cryptography is, is broken, chances are the rest of your secure application might fall with it. Um, and cryptographic misuses can happen fairly easily, especially if you are a developer um, who isn't um, specializing in cryptography. Um, this happens um, especially even if you are not um, used to thinking about, okay, this needs to be cryptographically secure, this needs um, to be implemented this way. I think these misuses can happen fairly easily. And the issue is that they are oftentimes fairly hard to spot. Um, if you are misusing a cryptographic algorithm, you might not directly see it. There might not be a warning message. Everything might seem just as it. Uh, everything might seem as if it was going okay, but your uh, cryptographic implementation or your usage of the cryptographic implementation might be really flawed. Um, so my plan for today is that we are go together um, looking through the, the lens of somebody who might start out using cryptography and what mistakes somebody might run, some, um, you might run into if you are starting out with it. I've made a couple of those mistakes myself and I think it's worth sharing them and they happen very often also in the real world. I'm going to have some real world um, scenarios and examples of them actually happening. So um, to start, I think, I'll, at least in my newsfeed, uh, messages like this pop up fairly often. Um, RSA, terribly broken. Um, IAS, terribly broken. Um, if, you, um, if you aren't reading um, the news articles themselves, they most of the time get a bit more nuanced. Um, but if you're just reading the headlines, you might come to the idea, well, I might invent my own crypto. It stands to reason if these systems aren't secure, at least that seems what the headlines say, why shouldn't I invent my own cryptographic scheme? Um, the idea sometimes being, if I'm just inventing my own cryptographic scheme and I'm scrambling my numbers around and only I know how I'm scrambling them around, it's secure, right? This idea is also called security by obscurity. Um, the idea is that as long as nobody else knows what my algorithm is doing and only I know it, it might be secure. 
Um, and this is, for example, the, the RSA decryption and RSA encryption. This is basically a line of code, more or less. You have to do a bit more, um, you have to um, derive the key a bit more, but it, in essence, it seems fairly easy. Um, this is a, a really terrible idea and something that we should all try to avoid. Um, using, um, there are people that have spent years of their lives, um, professors that are, um, that are creating these cryptographic algorithms that are trying to be as secure as possible. And there is a huge community that is trying to ensure that the cryptographic algorithms that we use are really secure. Um, we can, I think it's really useful to harness all of this, um, all of this brain power that is already put into place of making um, cryptography more secure. And this happens also in the real world. So um, inventing cryptographic systems isn't something that, um, that never happens. Um, NXP, which is, I think, a fairly known company, at least in Graz, um, is a really, really big company. And the MyFair Classic chip is a prime example of this. They implemented their own cryptography um, with a version called, uh, with a name called Crypto One, which is their own version of a stream cipher. And the stream cipher is terribly broken. This is especially, uh, especially unfortunate because these chips that you can't update the cryptography on them. They are broken. If you have a MyFair Classic, um, this, the, the underlying smart card is just broken. And I encourage you, they are, they are well, over 1 billion units sold. Um, I encourage everybody, if you have a couple of um, cards in your wallet, to just check if they are actually MyFair Classic, because an astonishing amount of them actually are. Um, they were used in a lot of um, public transportation systems. Um, um, in cities like London, Boston, Beijing, South Korea, um, which, and all of them are really badly broken. This is, goes to show that we shouldn't try to invent our own cryptographic system, because if companies as big as NXP seem to um, make mistakes, there's a good chance that we, as somebody, as people that um, aren't professors or PhD students in that direction, are also making the same mistakes. Okay, what about hard coding keys? This is something that also happens fairly often. Um, if maybe you are just, it's just okay to hard code your keys into a string.xml file, and if your application is closed sourced anyway, then it, it doesn't matter anyhow. Um, this is also a really, really bad idea for a multitude of reasons. Um, if this happens especially often in, um, in Android applications, because a lot of people, um, a lot of newer developers try out Android, and they might have to implement a cryptographic primitive, uh, they might use a um, a cryptographic algorithm, and they think, well, I'm just um, hard coding my keys, and it won't matter anyhow because I'm not publishing any of my source code, so it should be fine. But reversing Android applications is very, very easy, and if you hard code your keys in there, it's really easy to find them. Um, and once an attacker gets access to your application without needing the source code, they are generally able to find your hard coded keys which is a really, really big issue. I also saw this, um, um, this quote from the official Android um, developer blog, and I was um, myself curious. So I looked at a couple of Android apps if it's actually as widespread as they say it is. Um, I looked at a specific Android application which has decently sized and has 100,000 downloads. Um, and it is, um, this was one of, I think, of the first two or three I looked at, and I can, could find things like this where there are hard-coded keys in there, or things like hard-coded public modules or private exponents for RSA encryption. This is terrible. Um, so hard-coding our keys, I think, especially if we just start out programming and working on a project, we might say, well, I'm going to change it later and at a later point, and once I publish it, I'm going to change it. Um, but oftentimes we might forget um, that, we, that we are using these hard-coded keys, and it's probably the best if we start um, not using hard-coded keys at the, at the beginning of our implementations. So, um, I, do I really need to use nonsense? Um, if you start out with cryptography, um, this might be something that, um, that, at least for me, I consider this is secure cryptography. You have a plain text, you put it through some encryption mode, and out you get a cipher text. Um, when I started out, I thought, well, this seems to be secure, right? I'm having a secure plain text, I encrypt it, and as long if we assume that my encryption is secure, this should be okay. Um, this idea is also called electronic codebook mode, or ECB for short. Um, 
what we want our encryption to be, this is Tux, and what we would like our encryption to look like is somewhat like this. If I encrypt this image, this is what I kind of want my, the end result to look like. Nobody should be able to um, understand whatever I encrypted and um, come back to the same image. The issue with ECB mode is that the same input leads to the exact same output. So if I have um, an input pixel, or if I have a chunk of input pixel, this leads to the exact same output pixel. And the image looks then something like this. <laughs> this isn't particularly secure, um, because all the white or black pixels lead to the exactly same output. This is why we shouldn't use ECB mode, um, and why we should stay away from it, because I think this is a perfect visual example why this is a, not a great a cryptographic uh, mode to use. Um, on the topic of nonces, are we allowed, um, now that we are using nonces, it seems that they are useful, so can we reuse some of them? Um, generating secure random numbers is fairly expensive, so why not just reuse the nonces that we already have? Something like this, for example. Um, this, doesn't, this oftentimes doesn't happen, um, this oftentimes just happens out of mistake. Maybe we are declaring a nonce globally and we forget to reinitialize it. Um, but this is also something that we should never do. We should never, ever reuse nonces. Um, the best case scenario for if you are reusing nonces is that your security is um, severely reduced or you are basically going back to ECB mode. Um, this is your best case scenario. Your worst case scenario is that an attacker might be able to decrypt all traffic from every other user. Um, so we should really be careful when using nonces and never, ever reuse them. Um, so. Randomness, for example, for those nonces is rather easy, right? So if we are using randomness, if I ask um, my favorite tool, JetGPT, how do I get a random number in C? This is what I get. I get a, a perfectly fine random number. The same, by the way, also happens for GitHub Copilot. If I say, hey, please seed me randomness and generate a nonce, then this is the, the solution that I'm proposed with. Um, the, issue with these type of solutions is that they are that this type of random number generation is okay if we don't care about cryptography this is fine if we aren't interested in cryptography at all if we just need a random number but for cryptography what this basically means is i can predict all of your um, all of your random numbers that are coming uh, time now gives me the, the current timestamp and the amount of current timestamps isn't too big i can just iterate through them and at some point guess what nonces you are using, I can predict all of your future nonces. This is really bad and dangerous, um, because if we have bad randomness, this, is, this breaks our entire encryption scheme. This is also something that um, happened to me, because I think oftentimes we are just developing along, and we, have, and we see, okay, here I need a nonce, I need a random number, I know how to generate those random numbers, this is what I use, um, but this is really, really dangerous. I might have something like predictable session tokens. Um, so if we are, if a cryptographic implementation says, hey, please provide a random value for this, we should look for functions that say something like suitable for cryptographic use. Um, a good idea is also to use uh, the u random in this case. This also happens. This isn't a, these aren't examples that never happen and that are more on the academic side of things, but um, this happened, for example, from, for a router that was generating their WPS pin using just time seeding, which made it really easy to guess. Then the one thing that is also um, that also happens fairly often are use of well-established cryptographic algorithms. The idea here being that, well, um, using insecure methods or um, using insecure key sizes. Um, the idea, bigger keys, worse, or worse performance, so I'm not going to use any bigger keys. Um, the data encryption standard for encryption, it already says the data encryption standard, what else should I use than the standard for encryption? Um, and for example, MD5, MD5 for hashing is also something that is very, very common. And um, mixing up, for example, key sizes. Cryptographers love using free letter um, abbreviations. RSA, IAS, if you are mixing up the key sizes depending on your implementation, this might um, severely damage your, your security. Um, don't use SHA-1, MD5, and DES. Um, cryptography as a field is very, very secure. Um, and it's not, it is the 
the process that cryptographic algorithms go through to be verified and to be deemed as secure is a, is a very rigorous process. Um, and it takes years to verify an algorithm. It's not like um, other fields that are, um, for example, web frameworks where things move generally a lot faster. But cryptographic algorithms have a long time until they are deemed secure. And they have, we have generally a long time before we deem a cryptographic algorithm insecure. Um, also, speeds um, that crypt older cryptographic algorithms are faster and that reduced key size might be, um, might be faster to use is not necessarily the case. Um, modern improvements like elliptic curve greatly improve speed. Um, and for selecting key sizes, you should generally have a look at, um, at the recommendation of NIST. They recommend you what key sizes to use for what algorithm. It's a good idea to use a cryptographic library that already prevents you from using key sizes that are too um, that are too small. A lot of cryptographic libraries aren't going to allow you to use keys that are too small for a chosen algorithm. This also happens, um, unfortunately, quite often in Android applications. This is a study, um, the evaluation of cryptographic usage in Android applications. Um, and at least, um, I think, 88% uh, of all of the applications that they tested had at least one cryptographic misuse. And the most common one is weak cryptography. Um, this means the usage of, for example, outdated methods like SHA-5 or even I think they also categorized ECB. So this happens fairly often. Um, and for Android applications, this I think it's a it's a great platform to maybe start out programming, and it's a lot it's a great platform for new programmers to really publish an app fairly quickly. Um, but this also means that there are mistakes that can happen, obviously. And I think therefore it's all useful to to understand well these algorithms I should stay away from. So we are finally done, right? We are using um, we are not using hard-coded keys, we are using secure nonces, we aren't using any weird randomness, um, we are using secure randomness, and we are using to-date cryptographic methods. We should be done by now. So our encryption is, should be sufficient by now. Once the mes messages are securely encrypted, we are done. Um, so what we've done so far, that should be enough. So what we've done so far is we have ensured or talked about mainly confidentiality, which was the first one which was the idea that, hey, um, nobody should be able to read the message that I'm sending you except the person that has the correct key. Confidentiality alone is, however, not necessarily sufficient. So this is an example of IIS in counter mode. We're using a secure nonce and a counter. This is the encryption and this is the decryption. The idea is that we're using a randomly chosen generated nonce concatenated with a counter and then we are encrypting this using a key and then XORing, that's the XOR sign, and XORing everything with a plain text. And out we get a ciphertext. This ensures confidentiality, but it doesn't ensure um, integrity, for example. The decryption would be, the, would be basically the same process, just in reverse. I take the nonce and the counter, I encrypt it We're using the key, then I XOR it with the ciphertext, and out I get the plain text. Since this is going to result in the same thing, it's basically just XORing whatever I get out from the nonsense counter. Now, if an attacker tries to intercept or intercepts the ciphertext and flips a couple of bits at a position in the ciphertext, this is also going to transfer in the ciphertext that, and is sending this message um, back to the receiver. This is also going to be um, in the ciphertext that the receiver is going to get. And this is also then going to be in the plain text. Now the, which means that the receiver is receiving an altered plain text without knowing it. If we are just talking about sending images um, to people, this isn't probably a big issue. Um, if these are bank statements and somebody is changing your transaction from 100 to 2,500 euros, um, this is probably a big deal to you. <laughs> um, so authenticated encryption is really important. So confidentiality and integrity are both really important and should be, um, should be considered when using cryptographic algorithms. Um, use message authentication codes for this. There are a couple out there. Um, they are called MAX for short, um, GMAX, CMATCH, CMAX, HMAX. Um, use whatever one of them. It is really, really important. Um, IES GCM is an example. Um, 
that is using message authentication code to ensure the integrity of your message. So to recap, we should never invent our own cryptography. I think this is a really, really important point um, because we are crypto, um, the cryptographic community is really doing all this heavy lifting and all this work for us that we shouldn't um, try to do it. We shouldn't, as developers, try to do it for them. Um, we shouldn't use hard-coded keys and we should avoid ECB mode. We have seen what happens. Um, a lot of libraries um, allow ECB mode still, um, but it, it should not be avoided. It should be avoided at, at all costs. Um, and we shouldn't reuse nonces or IVs. Um, reusing, especially nonces, is really, really dangerous, and we have seen what happens before. We are basically reverting just back to ECB mode. Um, and I think the, the pseudorandom number generators that we are using, I think it's really easy to just, um, to just be in our habits, program along, and use a pseudorandom number generator that is actually insecure and not intended for cryptographic use. Um, we should make sure that the algorithms in place are secure. Um, as I said, I don't think that um, I don't think that this requires to um, read every cryptographic paper that comes up. Um, just having a quick Google search, hey, um, should I use um, MD5 for hashing? Um, should I use um, DES for encryption? Is fairly straightforward. Um, and use encryption with authentication. Um, if you aren't using uh, encryption with authentication, then the things that I demonstrated earlier can happen to us. Um, that people are able to intercept messages and change them, even though they are secure. So, how can we, what are actionable items and how can we ensure that we prevent most of them? Um, I think the most, the most important one is um, using existing libraries and using good existing libraries. There's a great, there is a great sea of good open source libraries out there that are really good to use. And we should be really mindful when using cryptographic libraries. Um, crypto cryptography is unfortunately one of the things that um, when something goes wrong, we don't instantly see it and we see it at a later point and this can be really, really dangerous. And I think if we, um, if we understand these common misuses that occur fairly regularly and are fixable fairly easily, I think we, um, we would all be better off and we should, would all be better developers and um, have a more secure system all around. So thank you for your, for your attention.